Antes de mais nada, gostaria de evocar a memória do Barão de Rio Branco, patrão da diplomacia brasileira, e, enfim, e dono, dono dessa casa em mais de um sentido, e agradecer aqui a hospitalidade e os bons ofícios do embaixador Eduardo Prisco, Paraíso Ramos, chefe do escritório de representação do Itamaraty, aqui no Rio de Janeiro, chefe desse palácio, portanto, e, em mais de um sentido, é, um mentor que tive na carreira. Obrigado, embaixador. Senhoras e senhores, gostaria de iniciar este evento comemorativo dos 30 anos da ABAC, saudando os demais representantes dos membros do Acordo Quadripartite, começando pelo senhor ministro de Estado das Relações Exteriores, Comércio Internacional e Culto da Argentina, Dom Felipe Solá. And which is represented by Minister of Foreign Affairs, Felipe Solá, as well as Dr. Elena Macedo and Marco Marso and our IAEA representative, the ambassador who is here with us today. I'd also like to uh, recognize Mr. Albuquerque, who is our Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation, as well as Mar Marcio Pontes and the Argentinian counterpart, and General Sampaio Olsen. We are here in the original uh, headquarters of the Itamaraty of Foreign Ministry for this event where Brazil and Argentina are celebrating the 30th anniversary of ABAC. In these three decades, it's left its uh, mark on both of these countries. This event today seeks to talk about and respect the transparency that we've on nuclear issues. We'd also like to uh, thank our partners for the success that we've had so far and how this has built more trust in our region. We'd also like to reiterate our firm commitment to the continued improvement of this organization because ABAC in these 30 years has been so important to us. I don't want to spend too much time on this welcome message because we're going to give the floor to the other representatives, but I'd just like to tell you all that you're welcome here. And now I'd like to give the floor to the Secretary General of ABAC, Dr. Lena Macedo. To the Brazilian Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Alberto Franco Franza, and the Argentinian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Felipe Solá, and Director of the Subdirector of um, the IAEA, Mr. Grossi and Mr. Albuquerque, and the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation of Brazil, Marcio Pontes, and the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation of Argentina, and our Minister of the Navy of Brazil, and also that his counterpart of, in Brazil, in, in Argentina. Members of the Commission, ladies and gentlemen, in the name of ABAC, I'd like to thank you all for your presence here today. On 18 of July, 1991, we signed in Guadalajara, Mexico, the uh, Non-Proliferation Treaty for our region. 
This was the agreement between Argentina and Brazil for the exclusivity of specific use of uh, peaceful uses of nuclear energy, or the bilateral agreement was signed in Guadalajara, Mexico. It establishes a system of reciprocal control of nuclear materials and facilities, that is, a system of regional safeguards, which at the time was an innovation within the international non proliferation regime, and there is no similar regime in the world to date. The bilateral agreement provides for the creation of an intergovernmental organization that defines the mission of verifying and providing assurance for that all nuclear materials and facilities in both countries are used exclusively for peaceful use purposes. Thus, AVAC was born, with, and its objective was clearly framed in the agreement, which is to administer and implement the common system of counting and control of nuclear materials, a regional safeguard system independent of both countries. Although we emerged from a political process of regional integration, we are a technical organization with well-defined objectives and tasks. In order to comply with these, uh, these 30 years gave shape to ABAC and established a relatively simple structure that has remained in place to this day. Over time, it has proven to be adequate and effective, not only for both countries to ensure compliance with the agreement, but also to ensure the independence of the Secretariat's actions and its institutional autonomy. Our agency is comprised of a governing body, the Commission, and an executive body, the Secretariat. The Commission is composed of four members, with each government appointing two of them. The Secretariat is headed by two secretaries, one from each nationality, who rotate the responsibility of heading the agency on an annual basis. There are 12 ABAC officers, counting the institutional and administrative financial sectors, six of each nationality, and the number has been the same since its creation. Human capital is one of ABAC's strengths. Perhaps it's the most important. Throughout these 30 years, both countries, honoring their commitment, have placed highly qualified personnel at the service of the Secretariat. In particular, ABAC's officers are senior level and come from the nuclear and safeguard sectors of both countries, with extensive experience in their thematic areas. As a regional safeguard system, one of our pillars is the cross-inspection regime, whereby Brazilian inspectors inspect Argentine facilities and vice versa, following an annual inspection which is foreseen in the quadripartite agreement. We have about 45 safeguard staff. It, we have lots of professionalism. And historically, these people have been part of our organization, and they have improved the transparency and cooperation. Women in the non-proliferation and disarmament activities are very important. Nuclear women in this field of non-proliferation and disarmament have been actively present since the beginning of these issues. And by nuclear women, I mean not only scientists and technologists, but also diplomats, politicians, sociologists, and communicators. At the Secretariat, women currently represent 42% of the technical and administrative staff and 27% of the inspectorate. I welcome all the initiatives currently being promoted by the IAEA in terms of gender equality policies and the promotion of scientific and leadership training for nuclear women. I personally believe that the increased collaboration of men and women in the nuclear field seems to be bringing interesting and enriching nuances to the way decisions are made and the styles of work. In its day-to-day -day work, the Secretariat has been strengthening an atmosphere of participation and dialogue and promotes a collaborative and shared work style among the officers, which we believe has contributed positively to maintaining a balance in work decisions and fostering unity among 
among the staff are important factors in view of ABEX technical and symbolic role. We have faced a great challenge during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'd like to emphasize that for the Secretariat, the health of ABEX personnel has been a priority. However, we set ourselves the goal of continuing to achieve the objectives of our mandate. In addition to complying with the prevention measures adopted by both countries, we are grateful for the help provided in this difficult situation by the national authorities and the ministries of foreign affairs of both countries. And we can proudly say that during 2020 and so far in 2021, we have been complying with the planned schedule of inspections and carrying out verification activities. I would also like to highlight that the coordination and cooperation with the IAEA is this situation has been extensive. ABEC, Argentina, Brazil, and the IAEA signed a comprehensive safeguards agreement, the so-called Quadripartite Agreement, which entered into force in March 1994. This agreement contains well-defined provisions on coordination and cooperation between IAEA and ABEC. While it states that both agencies should reach independent conclusions, it provides for coordination to minimize duplication of activities in the field. I'm pleased to emphasize the good results re obtained in the relationship between IAEA and ABEC over the past 30 years, which reflects the high level of understanding and cooperation achieved by both organizations in the field of assurances on the exclusively peaceful use of nuclear energy our agency as a regional safeguard body is part of a broad network of international instruments and, in and organizations each with distinctive uh, features and we also uh, like to uh, the bilateral agreement reflects the principles of the treaty of Tateloco and the creation of ABAC contributed to the establishment of the first nuclear weapons free zone in a densely populated region of the world. In this context, ABEC and OpenL have established a framework for a relationship of information exchange and cooperation, an agreement that we hope to further deepen in the future. Today, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of ABEC. The nuclear plans of both countries continue to expand, and we face new challenges at the Secretariat. We are approaching the future in a forward-looking manner, adopting actions that will ensure that we will be able to meet this growth with the, with the responsiveness and technical excellent that have characterized our agency since its beginning. We have consolidated a solid international credibility in the effective and efficient verification of nuclear activities in Argentina and Brazil. The main reasons for this have been the continuous political commitment and the technical and economic support provided by both countries, and I reiterate ABAC's independence in the implementation of its verification activities. The results obtained during this time demonstrate to the international community the full compliance of Brazil and Argentina with the obligations assumed in the bilateral agreement and the clear and defined commitment of both countries to the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Although our objective, as I said at the beginning, is technical work, implementing safeguards with our daily work and accumulated experience, ABAC continues to to contribute to confidence building and recruitment between Brazil and Argentina and is an important factor for the growing cooperation between the two countries in the area of peaceful uses of nuclear energy. I think uh, I'd like to conclude by thanking both countries and the members of the Commission for their continued support to our agency, a salute to all the people who have been part of ABAC in these 30 years for all their efforts. At the Secretariat, we are a group of people who share two languages and two cultures in our professional and personal dealings, mutually enriching each other, and above all, embodying a deal, on a daily basis that ideal of trust, transparency, and mutual cooperation. We are a concrete meeting point between the two countries. An affectionate thank you to my colleague, Dr. Marco Marso, to the officers of the members of the Secretariat, and to the ABEC Inspectorate for their professionalism and dedication. Thank you for your attention. Senhoras e senhores, 
Neste momento, fará uso da palavra o ilustríssimo doutor Marco Márcio, secretário adjunto da ABAC. Subsecretary, Assistant Secretary of ABAC, Dr. Marzco Marzo. Excelentíssimo senhor Ministro das Relações Exteriores do Brasil, Embaixador Carlos Alberto Franco França, Excelentíssimo Senhor Ministro das Relações Exteriores, Excellency, Comércio Internacional e Culto da Argentina, Engenheiro Felipe Foreign, Ministro Foreign Affairs do Brasil, Excelentíssimo uh, Diretor Geral Franco Far da Agência França, Internacional de Ministro uh, Foreign, Foreign Affairs da Argentina, Felipe Solá, Excelentíssimo Ministro uh, Mariano Crossi, the Ambassador of the IAEA, Almirante de Esquadra. And our Minister of Mines and Energy, uh, Admiral Squadron Ma Admiral, and the Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation of Brazil, Marcos Contes, His Excellency the Director of the development of nuclear activities for the Brazilian Navy General Olson, Sampaio Olson, and the President of the Regulatory Authority of uh, Argentina, Agustin Arbor Gonzalez, members of the ABAC Commission and groups of the Secretariat. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a pleasure to have each one of you present on this very special day for ABAC, being a part of and consolidating and maintaining a technical organization with international credibility is a huge challenge, especially in an area as sensitive and sophisticated as the control and accounting of nuclear materials, an area known internationally as nuclear safeguards. On this landmark date, when we celebrate ABAC's 30th anniversary, it is worth reflecting on some of the factors that have contributed to the agency's success in its activities throughout this period. The first of these was the determination dedication and the talent of the representatives of our two countries, diplomats, technicians, who help to bring the decision of the governments into reality. They negotiated the bilateral agreement for exclusively peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The agreement determined the same rights and obligations of the two countries regarding the use of nuclear energy and nuclear non-proliferation. It is therefore fair, harmonious, and non-discriminatory. The bilateral agreement formalized the common system of accounting for and control of nuclear materials and established ABAC as an agency with international legal person, legal uh, as a legal entity whose primary function is to administer that system. Therefore, the bilateral agreement precisely defined the mission of ABAC which is to verify all nuclear materials in all nuclear activities of the two countries are being used exclusively for peaceful purposes. Furthermore, it defined how ABAC should proceed in order to fulfill its mission properly. The bilateral agreement actually created an ABAC model, which is composed of a tripod formed by the ABAC, the national authorities of the two countries and the operators of the nuclear facilities. Unlike many European countries that make up Euratom, the European Safeguards Agency, in which the national safeguards authorities were extinguished, the bilateral agreement maintained all the attributions of the national safeguards authorities in each country. 
the Nuclear Regulatory Authority in Argentina and the National Nuclear Energy Commission in Brazil. They are solid, well-structured and effective authorities that control the nuclear material in their respective countries. Their interface between AVAC and the operators of the nuclear facility. Every agreement assumes that the parties act in good faith and in cooperation. If one party fails, the whole system fails. In these 30 years, all parties have continuously cooperated to fulfill the bilateral agreement. Today, therefore, we are celebrating more than the anniversary of AIBAC. We are celebrating the anniversary of this successful model that is the AIBAC model. I would also like to highlight a key provision of the bilateral agreement, which is the right of operators of nuclear facilities to protect sensitive technological, commercial and industrial information. This required ABAC to make an effort to adapt safeguards designs to the operator's requirements. This is an exercise in creativity and development that was very successful as it was able to execute robust safeguards while at the same time protecting sensitive information. The second factor was the permanent political support that the governments of the two countries offered the ABAC in order to keep it independent in its verification activities and in its conclusions. On the other hand, the verification of nuclear materials requires sophisticated and expensive precision measurement and control instruments, which evolve very quickly and need to be continuously updated. This has only been possible with the regular budgetary contribution that the two countries have provided to the Secretariat over these years. Another essential factor was the technical support that both countries provided to ABAC, as stated in the bilateral agreements, such as the provision for analytical laboratories, and most importantly, the work of highly qualified scientists, engineers, and technicians. Ever since its very beginning, both countries provided their best technical personnel to work at ABAC as officers and as inspectors. Our two countries decided in 1990 at the Iguazu Falls Declaration to link the bilateral verification scheme to the international non-proliferation regime, which resulted in the signing of the quadripartite agreement in December of 1991 between Argentina, Brazil, ABAC, and the International Atomic Energy Agency. In fact, the negotiation were carried out in this very same room that we're in today. The quadripartite agreement is a sui generis agreement, as it is based on the common system of accounting and control of nuclear materials. Dr. Elena Macedas has already mentioned the good coordination of activities between ABAC and the IAEA. I believe that it should be a permanent objective of both agencies to increase the efficiency of these activities in order to minimize the duplication of activity. An important factor for the international projection of ABAC were the technical cooperation agreements with institutions that work in the nuclear safeguards area, aiming at the exchange of knowledge and the development of projects and technologies of interest to the ABAC. There are technical cooperation agreements with institutions from Argentina, Brazil, the European Commission, the United States and South Korea, as well as with the IAEA and the important 
agreement that we have with them. Furthermore, ABAC actively participates in two important international safeguards forums where new technologies are presented and discussed. The European Safeguards Research and Development Association and the Nuclear Materials Management Institute based in the United States. In these 30 years, ABAC has performed more than 3,200 inspections for nuclear material verification. In this time, the amount of uranium in inventory grew three times and that of plutonium grew five times requiring our focus on increasing efficiency and effectiveness as the same structure and number of ABAC officers were maintained. Just to get a sense of the level of responsibility that is required, it is enough to mention that the amount of nuclear material currently under control of the ABAC would be enough raw material for the manufacture of approximately 4,000 rudimentary atomic bombs. I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to all 38 Argentine and Brazilian members of the ABAC Commission, to all four Argentine and three Brazilian secretaries who preceded us, and to the 192 inspectors and all the technical officers and administrative staff who worked and still work in the Secretariat. Allow me to pay special tribute to the first two secretaries, Dr. Giorgi Antonio Cole, who unfortunately has already left us, and Dr. Carlos Theo Alvim da Silva, who were instrumental in the consolidation of ABAC. The permanent challenge now and in the future is to maintain the technical capability of excellence at an international level so that the conclusions of the verification activities are accurate, correct, independent, and credible. I am sure that everyone involved directly or indirectly in ABAC's activities will be motivated and dedicated to face all the challenges ahead. Finally, I would like to express the pride of AVAC officials in being able to contribute decisively to the peaceful use of nuclear energy in both countries and thus contribute to regional and international security, as well as to thank each government for its confidence in AVAC. I appreciate the presence of all of you at this celebration, which honors us very much. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento assistiremos a mensagem gravada pela excelentíssima senhora subsecretária-geral e alta representante do secretário-geral das Nações Unidas, senhora Izumi Nakamitsu. Excellencies, it is a great pleasure to join you in commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Brazilian Argentine Agency for Accounting and Control of Nuclear Materials, or ABAC. The ABAC is the centerpiece of a complex arrangement that ensures verification of commitments made by Argentina and Brazil regarding exclusively peaceful uses of nuclear energy. This initiative has successfully put an, put an end to decades of mutual distrust between Brazil and Argentina regarding their respective nuclear programs. And it removed the risk that either country, motivated by fear or misperception of the other, could move in the direction of nuclear proliferation. With the ABAC, mistrust gave way to transparency. Transparency created trust, and trust enabled cooperation. The experience of the past three decades has demonstrated the wisdom of the decision made by Argentina and Brazil 
both chose to become strategic partners rather than rivals. The success we celebrate today is the fruit of much effort and above all of the political will, determination and ingenuity with which Argentina and Brazil faced and their challenges in the nuclear field. 30 years later, the ABAC experience is clearly an example to be followed. It is the outcome of great technical and diplomatic cooperation between Argentina and Brazil. ABAC also represents an important contribution to regional security and nuclear non-proliferation. I hope that other countries currently locked in a dynamic of competition and mistrust in the nuclear field can take profit of the ABAC experience, adapting, to, adapting it to their respective realities. I trust that both countries will be able to preserve the legacy of the first 30 years of ABAC and strengthen it further. I am equally confident that ABAC will continue to have much to celebrate over the next three decades and beyond. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now listen to the message of Dr. Bonini. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Elena Mercedes, Secretary of the Brazilian Argentine Agency for Accounting and Control of Nuclear Materials. Excelentíssimo Sr. Carlos Alberto França, Ministro das Relações Exteriores da República Argentina. His Excellency Carlos Alberto França, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Federative Republic of Brazil. Excellency Felipe Carlos Solá, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Argentine Republic. His Excellency Rafael Mariano Grossi, Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. And the Honorable Dr. Marco Antonio Marso. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to participate in this celebratory event, and I am grateful for the opportunity to lead this discussion with and make this address to the high officials of the Argentine and Brazilian governments, as well as to the high officials of the Brazilian Argentine Agency for Accounting and Control of Nuclear Materials, particularly its secretary, Dr. Elena Macedas. In this regard, I'd like to extend my warmest congratulations to you all for the 30th anniversary of the Agreement of Guadalajara on the exclusively peaceful use of nuclear energy between Argentine Republic and the Federative Republic of Brazil. This agreement gave birth to the Brazilian Argentine Agency for Accounting and Controls of Nuclear Materials, also known as ABAC. Through this agreement, Argentina and Brazil affirm their unequivocal commitment to the strictly peaceful use of nuclear energy. And at the same time, they reaffirmed and strengthened the spirit of the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, also known as the Treaty of Plas de Loco. Indeed, the ABAC and OPANEL, the Office for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, 
are a clear example uh, to the world and a source of pride for the region. Both are unique bodies of their kind. ABAC as the only regional safeguards body and OpenL as the only body completely dedicated to nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. Ever since 1993, when ABAC and OpenL signed a, an agreement of cooperation, the two bodies have maintained close contact and a constant exchange of information on nuclear activities in Argentina and in Brazil, and in compliance with the provisions of the Treaty of Tlatelolco. Ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced that the experiences of ABAC and OPANEL can undoubtedly serve as a model and source of inspiration for other regions in the world, especially for those seeking to establish nuclear weapons-free zones and an effective verification system, particularly on peaceful activities for the development of nuclear energy. Muito obrigado e os meus parabéns novamente. Thank you very much and my congratulations once again. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento fará uso da palavra o excelentíssimo senhor embaixador Ladies Rafael Marinho Grossi, diretor-geral da Agência Internacional de Energia Atômica. Words of an ambassador Rafael Grossi. Senhoras e senhores, boa, boa, bons dias a todos. Verdadeiro prazer. Hello everyone. It's truly a pleasure to be here with you and to be here in Rio de Janeiro to celebrate such important events that took place 30 years ago. Any celebration is an opportunity to celebrate the past, to think about the present, and also to reflect upon what will come in the future. The past is what it was. There was a lot of courage that was necessary back in those times to cross this line that led us to more cooperation and solidarity, but personally, and I say this with a lot of emotion, there are many diplomats who work here in Buenos Aires who now are part of ABAC, but Dare I say something so obvious, but 2021 is not 1991. As you all know, I am here as part of an official visit to Brazil. It started in the northeast of Brazil, and then I came to Sao Paulo, Rio, and many other places, Angra, and I visited the different nuclear installations and facilities, and I have lots of admiration for this. And I can see the importance and the reality that it is, the, re the resumption of Angra 3. We also have the EPEN building in Sao Paulo, the site for the construction of the first multipurpose reactor in Brazil, and that's very important for Brazil and for our region. Also in Sao Paulo, my friends from the Brazilian Navy showing all the advances 
and ambitious advances that they've made in the naval realm. And they did it, though, with the presence of ABAC and for Argentina. We have also seen lots of progress. Argentina approved its new nuclear plan, which, is, which foresees the fourth nuclear power plant in Argentina, as well as the research reactor. And we also have the first, we, and when I say we, I mean we, all of us, the first modular reactor. I think that this is formidable and wonderful for us, but we also must think about as has often been said that these realities deserve and need a safe and institutional safeguards framework that will oversee these advances in progress. This program, the nuclear program of Argentina and of Brazil are no longer the same as they were back in the past. Nowadays, we have a very large number or amount of nuclear materials and so Brazilians and Argentinians and ABAC, we need to think about the evolution the way we have to think about how the men and women of the 1990s were thinking. And we don't want to come here and repeat the same thing that we did back in the day and every 10 years. We need to strengthen ABAC. We need to work for a safeguards agreement and framework that is very strong and cooperative between the two countries. The Vienna Agency will always be our partner and will be a friend in this journey. Thank you very much. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento fará uso da palavra o excelentíssimo senhor Alucim Arbor Gonzalez, presidente da Autoridade Regulatória Nuclear da Argentina. Arbor Gonzalez, the president of the Argentinian. Nuclear Regulatory Authority. Buenos días. Hello, good morning. First of all, it's an honor for me to be here and represent the Presidency of Argentina. At this celebratory event, we are talking about a source of pride for my country in this particular organization, this institution, ABAC. In, on behalf of the regulatory authority, I'd like to greet you and particularly Dr. Elena Macedas, the Secretary General of ABAC, and Assistant Secretary Marco Marzo, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, Mr. Franco Franza, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Argentina, Felipe Sola, and Marco Cesar Pontes, the Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation of Brazil, and his counterpart from Argentina, Roberto Salvareza, and Ambassador of Argentina, of Argentina, Mariano Grossi, as well as all the members of the Diplomatic Corps in this area of science, technology, and innovation between Brazil and Argentina. 
I won't even mention the importance of this agreement between Argentina and Brazil for the strictly peaceful uses of nuclear energy, and I won't go into the, the future of this agency, nor about the quadripartite treaty. But what I would like to talk to you about are some reflections, thoughts about the reduction of ABAC and the community that this institution carries out as a safeguards organization. Considering the law that establishes a safeguards activity and the regulatory authority of Argentina, we are in charge of inspection of all the nuclear activity in Argentina. And one of our goals are to oversee the nuclear activities to make sure that they are extreme solely for peaceful purposes in line with the policies of non-proliferation. Of course, this bilateral agreement places Brazil and Argentina in equal status for this common accounting and controls of materials, which is the ABAC organization. I'd like to point out the idea of RN and how much we have worked to bring human capital to our organization, to the ABAC organization both because of our obligations, but also because of our beliefs in this particular treaty. We contribute experts so that they can participate in ad hoc work groups for ad hoc or for training people on safeguards and verification activities, particularly so that they can work Independently, RN, the regulatory authority, has also been working very important, in, important things uh, related to ABAC and respects ABAC, particularly our secretary of ABAC, Dr. Alina Marcedo. In collaboration with ABAC, RN has supported the example of training different people from the agency, particularly in the latest uh, procedures for equipment and software and procedures for using ABAC properly, amongst others, by giving our most skilled human resources to AVAC, we are always doing so with the belief that we are providing structure to AVAC so that we can give it continuity. As I mentioned a few moments ago, AVAC was in charge of inspecting nuclear activities and also to do periodic verification of all the facilities and the material used in Brazil and Argentina to make sure that all of these all of these materials are being used properly and are being stored properly. One of the distinctive elements of this system is its inspection scheme, which allows different parts of Argentina and Brazil to inspect each other. And this is very relevant for the specialization of the different sectors. It's also important to keep in mind that ABAC's work is very wide-ranging in the different countries because we are covering many different facilities. We know that by 2020, we had 880 inspectors 
siempre working in different activities both before and after the inspection too. And in the pandemic, we also had some additional challenges. And we dedicated many people to inspections as well as uh, another 70 people to the design of inspections to comply with our bilateral agreement. Our inspectors, as well as the work of the Secretariat, allows us to get to effective conclusions. As a member of ABAC, I'd also like to congratulate each of the parties of CENAME and the Argentinian Regulatory Authority for all for all they do to reach the objectives of ABAC. ABAC is unique in the world and is doing crucial work for overseeing the nuclear activities in our two countries. We have overcome many challenges along the way and we have been successful. And we hope that there will be many more years of success in the future. If you allow me, I'd like to also um, give a personal note here. First of all, I'd like to recognize the members of the ABAC Commission. First of all, Gabriela Martinique of the uh, Chancellery and others, Minister Mara from the Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and through all of them and their teams who contribute by fueling us to carry out the work of the agency. I'd also like to recognize the current officials of the Secretariat of ABAC, Ana Maria Vaz de Araujo, Sofia Aranje Morito, Mr. Diaz, Horacio Diaz, Carlos Diaz, Leonardo Dunque, Mr. Molino, Marcos Cereza Moreira, Ms. Maria Gononi, and others. And last but all, not the end just yet, I'd like to tell you, and I hope that the, my emotions don't overcome me, but the creation of ABAC had collaboration between the two countries prior to the establishment of the agency. Marco Marso and I, we made, we did that collaboration in the 1980s, and we worked together to develop safeguards between our two countries. And without that work, we wouldn't have achieved what we've achieved so far. And that's what really moves me because those were some of the moments that led to creating this mutual trust between our countries in this very sensitive area, which is the nuclear area. And it gives me great pride to talk about this today because it's practically the culmination of my career. And here we have 30 years, which is the culmination of that. It's the product of our hard work together. Everyone performed very well with the Secretariat, working with ABAC over these past 30 years. We had lots of work together that contributed to the Brazilian agency and made sure that we had safeguards, but also recognized the, and has been recognized by the international community. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time,
I'd like to give the floor. Senhores, neste momento fará uso da palavra o excelentíssimo senhor Marcos Pontes, I'd like to give the ministro de Estado da Ciência e uh, Tecnologia. Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation of Brazil, Marcio Pontes. Marcos Pontes. Ok, bom dia. Bom dia, bom okay, dia well, a todos. Hello. Hoje Good um morning feliz. to you all. Comemoração. Comemoração it's a happy nós. day, a day of celebration. É... And that's very important. Gostaria de começar, né, cumprimentando a todos like já to by, uh, citados aqui no cerimonial. Greeting you all. É, gostaria de cumprimentar a todos os anos da And first of all, I'd like Brasil, to greet Argentina, everyone and congratulate ABAC for its 30th anniversary and greet you all who are part of this agency and also all of you who have made history in these 30 years. Each of you are part of the elements that made up this history. It's very clear that it is of great pride for me as the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation to be here and to have the participation of CENAME in this area, this field that's so important. It's so important to our policy, our nuclear policy. And let's talk about the applications of nuclear technology, the science of technology, of nuclear technology. We have different applications for health, the environment, and for helping our Navy as well. And there are so many other applications that are making use of the nuclear energy for so many different things. Obviously, of course, we have the nuclear energy generation that is produced in both of our countries. This time that we're living through with COVID-19 made it very clear that the union between our two countries is very important, particularly when we are dealing with a threat that affects all of humanity. And it has also had an impact on our nuclear activities and all the different scientists that are working here. So we also have to think about how we can reduce the impact of the pandemic now and in the future. Nuclear science and all its peaceful uses is very important, but we also have to reduce the risks. And we need to reduce and prohibit the non-peaceful uses of nuclear energy. And I'm very excited about our contributions to the International Space Station. Então, é, é muito bom ver o sucesso dessa And so agência, it's é great to see the success of ABAC and think about the future of this agency and the different innovations that we can create here in Brazil and how we can help so many different people and work in synergy with all of our different collaborators, both in Brazil and in Argentina and to make sure that our decisions on a daily basis help us to continue working together. These flags that are here aligned one next to the other really emphasizes and underscores the partnership that we have between our two countries. Success is a very important word, but it really needs to come with the other word, which is trust. We need to share, and I've already talked about this with other ministers here, but we need to improve the cooperation between our two countries, and I think that APAC 
sem dúvida nenhuma, nós temos um futuro brilhante aí pela frente. Nesse momento, existem todas as possibilidades e os riscos envolvidos com a aplicação de energia nuclear. I'd like to just underscore the risks involved in the applications of nuclear technology because it's important to underscore that many technologies have two sides to them, the positive and the negative. So they can be very beneficial, but they can also be very noxious. And so I'd just like to thank uh, ABAC and congratulate ABAC and everybody here for all the success that has come of this agency. I am sure that we can talk on behalf of our countries for all the work that we've done together. We are a leader in the world, and particularly ABAC. And so thank you so much for all you've done. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento fará uso da palavra o excelentíssimo Dr. Roberto Salvarese, ministro de Estado da Ciência, Tecnologia e Inovação da Argentina. Buenos dias. Me honra estar aqui acompanhándolos. What an honor to be here with all of you and all the different authorities and officials who have already been mentioned this morning. So much empathy, so much pride celebrating these 30 years of ABAC. And they also reflect this tradition this operation that we have had between the technological and scientific communities of our two countries. It's something very historic and strong, and there's a whole history behind it. And basically it organizes different areas in our two countries and this idea that we've already heard from Marcelo Pontes about uh, biotechnology and astronomics and astrophysics where all of our scientific communities are actively engaged day to day. But obviously we also have to think about development, nuclear development, which means and needs ABAC, which today we are celebrating on its 30th anniversary. I'd like to point out that the agreement that founded this agency crystallizes so much on the Brazilian and Argentinian side to its commitment to completely peaceful uses of nuclear energy and all the products that are developed there from. I'd also like to take this opportunity to highlight the political will for transparency on nuclear activities as well as the men and women in technology and science that help so much also all the autonomous people who work on developing technology and everything that they've contributed to the development and and maintenance of ABAC over these 30 years. Very clearly, it had an impact on the technical capacity of ABAC, which is recognized around the world as an essential factor for guaranteeing the institutional independence of safeguards, conclusions, and effective uh, verification. ABAC does not only have a technical and administrative structure in terms of its human capital, thinking about its very skilled, highly skilled uh, staff in the nuclear area, but also a 
specialized group of inspectors in the different uh, fuel cycle facilities that the two different countries have for the optimal development of nuclear technology. We're talking about the latest generation technology and laboratories in Brazil and in Argentina that make up this network and different technical and safeguards approaches. Something that we have contributed a lot to in the international community, which is the development of the development of the uh, sampling process of uranium and plutonium, which not only optimizes the amount of, of these raw materials that we have to use, but also reduces how much we have to use. Both of our tech scientific communities has worked on this, and we have had this process and method approved by international agencies. But we also know that it's being considered by the IAEA for its possible use in other installations around the world. I think that this is something that needs to be highlighted given the contribution that we have made to science and technology in the world. It's also important to keep in mind the huge potential that nuclear energy has and the, pay, the, the role that ABEC plays. Because today, energy, nuclear energy, isn't simply about having uh, nuclear energy facilities, but it's also working with agriculture to reduce uh, plagues and to help uh, in the health care fields and other sectors. For example, uh, working with mosquitoes uh, that transmit our vectors for dengue and Zika. There's just so much potential that the nuclear field has way beyond any of the fields that are the most recognized in the nuclear area, but also others. ABAC is an example of transparency and the promotion of trust, and they will continue to be fundamental in the cooperation between Brazil and Argentina. However, the credibility that this agency has gained over its 30 years has become a very important asset for countries as a fundamental contributor to non-proliferation. Brazil and Argentina gain from ABEC a framework that establishes the ties between these two countries and helps them with a strategic alliance that values this shared wealth that we have in this agency that today meets 30 years. Thank you so much. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento, fará uso da palavra o excelentíssimo almirante de esquadra Bento Albuquerque, ministro de Estado de Minas e Energia. O ministro de Minas e Energia do Brasil, o admiral Bento Albuquerque. Senhor ministro de Estado das Relações Exteriores, His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Relations, Mr. Franco França, whom I thank for this invitation to be here and address this distinguished group of people. I'd also like to address the Minister of Foreign, Ex Foreign Affairs, International Trade and Worship of Argentina's Mr. Felipe Salam. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great satisfaction and happiness that I am here to address this group on the 30th anniversary of ABAC. Seja nos cargos que ocupei anteriormente na Marinha do Brasil. 
considering the different roles that I have had in other uh, times of my career or as the Minister of Mines and Energy, where we are constantly realizing how important this mechanism is for us, APEC, over these three decades, has been extremely effective for the international efforts of non-proliferation which is based on a robust arrangement of controls and is involved in the collaboration between Brazil and in Argentina. The presence of Ambassador Rafael Gross, the second member of the IAEA to visit us in four years, pelos relevantes serviços prestados à comunidade nuclear and mundial. All the who a presença do embaixador Rafael Gross, provided so much service to us all, hoje é motivo de dupla felicidade. Não apenas por ele today, representar aqui, no mais alto like nível, to, a Agência Internacional de also, Energia Atômica, mas também, se me permite a liberdade, meu amigo Rafael, por ser o primeiro diretor-geral argentino-brasileiro da Agência Internacional de Energia Atômica. Nesses 30 anos da ABAC, temos, portanto, representative of the IAEA a começar pelos programas nucleares do Brasil e da Argentina que nestas três décadas se desenvolveram e here to celebrate these three decades of collaboration between Brazil and Argentina in nuclear activity so that we can continue providing nuclear energy to our society. The Ministry of Mines and Energy has made a drive to promote nuclear energy throughout the government and also increase the electrical matrix. Our energy plan for the long term, which is the 2015 National Energy Plan, Entre expands our nuclear generation by 8 anos. to 10 gigawatts Isso in the next 30 years. A this means that we will be building new nuclear power plants and small nu modular reactors which are an economic, de base, economical uh, alternative and another way to reduce carbon emissions, particularly in a country as large as Brazil. On this point, I'd like to highlight the leadership of Rafael Mariano Gross for promoting nuclear energy as part of the solution for a low-carbon future. Sobre mudança do clima. At the Paris Treaty, Rafael, or the, at the Paris Agreement negotiations, Ambassador Rafael worked very hard to make sure that we would be together for the 2026 treaty to show the different role that nuclear will play in the future of energy. We are also going to make the adjustments necessary for uh, the legal framework that we have for regulating nuclear in Brazil. This will... This will bill that is setting up this new framework has already been sent to the Congress and is under consideration. This will help us to make sure that nuclear energy and its regulation will be separated from sending. And we want to reach the highest standard, technically, regulatory, and safety and legal, 
as well as international requirements. I am sure that we will continue to rely on the IAEA support as well as the structuring of the Brazilian regulatory framework and the small modular reactors. And we will expand Brazil's participation in technical programs of this agency. Today, which marks 30 years of collaboration between Brazil and Argentina in the nuclear sector, through ABEC, is probably a date, is, is for sure a date to be celebrated. We want to continue celebrating ABEC's success and its and the dedication of the technical group and all of the staff that is being celebrated wholeheartedly today, particularly Dr. Elena Marceiros and Mr. Marce Marco Marso. Congratulations to IVAC. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to give the floor to the Minister of Foreign Relations of Argentina, Mr. Felipe Sola. It is with great pleasure that I am here today with you in this beautiful place, the Itamaraty Palace. I had never been to this actual palace before, and I'd also like to salute my counterpart, uh, Carlos Alberto Franco Franco, and for the welcome he has given me to this house, as well as a warm felt salute to the different ministers that are here and Dr. Elena Macedos. I'd also like to especially uh, mention Rafa, our ambassador Rafael Mariano Grossi for his, also for his uh, delivery in Portuguese. It is an opportunity and a pleasure to have at the head of the IAEA a person from our country, but also it's a guarantee that we can continue looking forward with that ex leadership at the IAEA. I'd also like to mention Dr. Elena Macedas and Marco Marzo. Elena, we learned uh, so much about the nuclear man, and so it's really a pleasure to be able to talk with a nuclear woman. And to Marco Marzo, I'd like to say that as our director of the regulatory authority, Agustina Bord Gonzalez, I'd like to recognize you too for all the things that you did prior to the ABAC agreement, particularly in the 1980s. All that you did really resulted in something that should be seen as a, what it really is, which is the trust that you have, the faith that we have in each other to make the political will to make this possible. Many people have already touched upon many different topics that I think are important, and therefore I'm going to uh, just leave those aside and focus on other points that haven't been mentioned. There are many different elements that make up ABAC. In these 30 years, we see lots of successes. Of course, there probably have been problems throughout this time, but let's uh, say, however, that these successes have been much greater than any kind of problem particularly the success of the workers 
that make up ABAC. I'd like to give my warmest regards to all of these people at the staff of ABAC. I'd also like to say that ABEC is a model. I'm not sure if it's 20 countries, as I've been heard, that enrich uranium around the world, but I don't know how many have actually made the commitments that Brazil and Argentina have made to peaceful uses. And the incredible de development of the sector as the secretary said, we must have 20,000 or 4,000 atomic, rudimentary atomic bombs that could be made. And so that's really impressive. And, but really what it is, is a huge responsibility for us. And I'd like to point out and it may not it may seem obvious but i don't think it's so obvious but in 1991 there were political decisions that are irreplaceable because those are what make up policy and those events only help to improve the lives of our people. We also had strategic uh, awareness of what each country was embarking on. We also had an idea, a vision for the future, because without that, you can't set up an agency that's going to take on such a huge and complex challenge as is the nuclear issue. And finally, and maybe most importantly, any statesperson, any politician has to value this very important element, which is trust. Trust is key. You have to be brave to be trusted because you can be, uh, you, you can be betrayed if you trust. And so being trustworthy, trusting is very important. Uh, it's, it requires bravery, but you also have to defend it. You have to keep on growing. Trust. We can say that today is, we're living in hard times. I couldn't agree more with that, but if we were to ask those who signed the Guadalajara Treaty in 1991, the agency and the foundation of the agency that was later uh, committing to the Tazilopo uh, Treaty, we, they, if we hadn't told them that they were dealing with uh, difficult times, those times were also difficult for Brazil in particular, and for Argentina as well, which was dealing with uh, all kinds of hyperinflation and looting. And we had these kind of things we had hard times back then, and we have hard times now. All times are hard. I've never heard of any president who only lives through good times. Every time is a hard time. The technicians, the professionals, all of those people who worked in the 1980s, all of those people who made a political decision and had the bravery, and they saw the future. They saw the potential of working together and the meaning between the meaning of the Brazilian Argentinian cooperation and relationship the trust and lack of trust that they had to overcome between the two military powers but they did so they overcame that and they created a smarter way of working the commitment to peace 
and security committed to in the Guadalajara Treaty, where Brazil and Argentina renounced the use and development of nuclear weapons for the consolidation of Latin America and the Caribbean as a peaceful region and the first nuclear weapons free zone. This paragraph says it all. And I'd like to come back to this point of unity and union. In unity, we can do everything. United, we have, it, it's almost impossible for anybody to overcome us. Getting together and uniting is difficult, but it has huge ramifications in the long run. Breaking up is easy. All you have to do is hurt each other and break up the relationship. And this is true both for people and countries. And I'd just like to remind you not to uh, be a dead horse, but I'd just like to mention the pride that we have re with regards to ABEC. Our national poem says that brothers have come together, and that's the most important. It's important to have true union in any time, because when you fight amongst each other, you hurt the others. And finally, I'd like to mention that this flag also has white and blue, and don't forget that. Thank you very much. Senhoras e senhores, deste momento, para uso da palavra, o excelentíssimo senhor embaixador Carlos Alberto Franco França, ministro de like Estado das Relações Exteriores. Eu gostaria de dar a ministra de Foreign Affairs do Brasil, embaixador Carlos Alberto Franco França. Senhoras e senhores, eu reitero as saudações e presentes que já mencionei nominalmente. Eu gostaria de agradecer a todos, me permitindo apenas fazer um agradecimento I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all and for your words here at ABAC. Today is an opportunity to not only celebrate ABAC's 30th anniversary, but also the different ideas involved in nuclear collaboration and also transparency, thinking about the safeguards between Argentina and Brazil in ABAC also reinforces the successes that we've had in engineering and development on the technical side. Our ABAC is established on an arrangement that is also recognized by the IAEA as a result of this arrangement, which is the sum of many different factors. Brazil and Argentina are the first countries in the world that work together in collaboration on their nuclear Program. The fundamental aspect is that countries in ABEC are reciprocal and they have direct solutions for peaceful uses of energy. Beyond the bilateral issues, we also see the work of IAEA and the Quadripartite Treaty, which was signed in the same year as the creation of ABAC. In the systems of this agreement, we see that both of these nuclear programs are coordinated with the agency and there's a lot of synergy. I'd like to thank you again uh, the, uh, for the presence of the IAEA uh, Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi and the presence of so many other people who have come here 
to value ABAC and its very key role in the quadripartite treaty. We also like to highlight the predictability of this event, of, of this treaty. The political value of ABAC is the trust that it builds between our two countries, Brazil and Argentina, knows more about nuclear programs and the strength of this model makes our nuclear programs in both countries be higher, better when it comes to transparency and inspection. And we are two of the agencies in the world that receive the most nuclear inspectors. And this model could inspire other countries. Although right now we don't have direct application of ABAC, we believe that our bilateral arrangements could contribute to developing more trust and reducing tension between our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, our activities in verification make concrete commitments. We are following up on concrete commitments in ABAC with our verification activities as well as our legally binding treaty. We are one of the only countries that in their constitutions limit nuclear activities to peaceful purposes. And we are committed to not producing nuclear weapons and we're committed to non-proliferation in that sense. Brazil was also the first country to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Ban Treaty. ABAC required Argentina and Brazil to have lots of political bravery and awareness of its responsibility on the nuclear issue and for the implementation of this treaty. Minister Salah here mentioned how important the word and idea of trust is. Today's celebration is very important for the preservation of our experience at ABAC. Today, we have policies set up by ABAC that are recognized by the IAEA and others. Now, however, or therefore is a very important time for nuclear activities, considering also Mexico and others. And Brazil reaffirms its commitment to not nuclear non-proliferation and the development of peaceful uses to strengthen ABAC even further and its functions and skills, and its tight relationship with the IAEA. I believe that AVAC will continue to be a success story for cooperation and a leader in non-proliferation, and it's a model for other countries and for a greater objective, which is a nuclear weapon-free world. Thank you very much. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento, o excelentíssimo senhor embaixador Carlos Alberto Franco França, ministro de Estado das Relações Exteriores, e o excelentíssimo senhor Felipe Solar, ministro das Relações Exteriores, Comércio Internacional e Cultura da República Argentina, acompanhados dos ilustríssimos doutores Marco Marzo, secretário adjunto da ABAC, The secretaries of ABAC, Marco Marzo, and Dr. Elena Maceda, to reveal the commemorative plaque for the 30th anniversary of ABAC.
Está encerrada esta cerimônia. This ceremony is now finished. Thank you.